Now, for those who don't follow me, I tend to cover shows with a positive attitude instead of what I call a grumpy old man attitude. I'm here to have fun, so I cover the show by highlighting one positive from each room and omitting all the negatives. Trust me, man, if I wanted to criticize the room, I can be worse than the Terminator. Now, let's start by giving you a sense of what the biggest audio show in North America actually looks like. The audio show took place at the Renaissance Schomburg Convention Center. The second I stepped into the hotel, I was thinking, man, this is how a kid feels going to Disney for the very first time. It's uh, 8.30 right now in the morning, so uh, it's before the show opened. And we just want to walk around before everyone shows up. Registration. So this is the Hi-Fi Plus magazine, the biggest magazine in England, I think. And they just reviewed the Galleon TS-120. Awesome. Just to give everyone an idea how many floors there are exhibiting. Guys, what? I'm at the fifth floor now. I'm at the sixth, seven. Are you for real, man? That's like 10, 12. I'm going to go to the floors. other listening rooms. Can you see how far yeah. it is? I'm telling you, man, after Expona, I'm going to be, I'm going to lose like 10 pounds or something walking everywhere. Now, the reason I'm walking around is because I wanted to show you guys the scale of it, right? You know, we always look at videos on uh, Expona. It's always just showing the rooms. But this, I'm showing you the place, man. This is just insane. So let's start with the million dollar system of the Estelon Extreme Speakers. Why so expensive? Who cares? Guys, at this price, it is no longer money. It is just a number. I told people at the show, just park your brain outside the room and go in and enjoy it. Now, as much as I wanted to do that, I keep walking around the room asking myself, what can a million dollar system give me that a $50,000 system cannot? Then it happened. I sat at the sweet spot and closed my eyes. I was shocked at the realism of the soundstage. It brought back memories from my youth, you know, the time when I still had a lot of hair and was single. At that time, I was able to attend some unamplified small concerts. The sound stage this million dollar system created brought me back to those days. I can feel the dimension of the stage and the nuances in the space. Amazing! Next, let's move on to our room, the CSS Typhon. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Speaker with the Galleon TS120 Special Edition. Now we spent Thursday night setting up and I have to commend Jay and the CSS team. Carrie and Dan for taking the time to treat the room. Carrie and Dan were crazy enough and built these 100 pound diffusers for this show. Totally worth it, but it was a lot of sweat and blood. By the way, you know there's this urban legend about audio shows? You know the one where the rooms sound horrible on Friday but amazing on Sunday? I tell you man, as Han Solo said, it's true. It's all true. It's true. All of it. In my case, Friday I used KT120 on the Galleon and it was a bit too bright and the bass was a bit too much. Saturday and Sunday I used Shuguang KT88Z tubes and it was great. In our room we had four amplifiers, $8,000 Norma Audio Revo, the $6,000 Hego H390, the $10,000 Octave V70, and the least expensive 4000 ish Galleon TS120 SE with upgraded tubes. We were alternating between solid state and tube amps. With the solid state amp, the bass was faster and tighter, while with tubes, the soundstage was wider, and I heard people describing the vocals as beautiful with the Galleon TS120. Now some of you will surely say, Thomas, obviously you're gonna say this combo sounds amazing, best of the best, blah blah blah. After all, who would call their own child ugly? Well, I recorded almost 30 interviews of people sharing the positive impression of the combo. No, I did not have to bribe anyone with Wagubi. Well, maybe just Nima from Nemo Propaganda. We are here to eat 
Wagyu, look at that, that's Nemo propaganda. Let's go. Oh yeah, look. All you can eat, 45 bucks. Wagyu brisket, okay. That's where you give massage to cows, right? That's Wagyu beef. Now after the show, some people placed their orders for the Typhon and the TS120 right away. So that goes to show people were actually really impressed. Now I'm not going to make you sit through all the interviews. Jay posted all the interviews on his channel, but I will share just one with you. My name is Jake Ross. I did not come in with super high expectations, I must admit. I was thinking to myself, who are these YouTubers thinking they can design audio equipment? I was very pleasantly surprised. My expectations were completely reversed. It was, it's among the best rooms I've heard at this show, cost no object. For the price, I think it's the best I've heard at this show. After the camera stopped, Jake Ross told me, this reminded him, you know those amateur YouTube boxers challenging the pros and unexpectedly winning against the pro? Yeah, that is how it felt for him. Now, regarding how the Typhon speakers sounds, the speaker images well. It has a deep sound stage, coherent, and it disappears in that small room. Detail, but not fatiguing. And above all, the bass is jaw-dropping. Strong and confident. You like that a lot of meat on the bone warm presentation? This is the speaker to get. If you love bass, but your significant other has put the no subwoofer clause in your marriage contract, this is the speaker to get. Now, despite having strong bass, perhaps with the help of the room treatment, the bass was well controlled and nuanced. Well, despite it being in a small room. If you ever thought a tube amp sucks when it comes to bass, this room will change your mind. Now, for those who have heard the combo, please, please, please leave a comment. Next, we have the Klipsch Horn Room. Now, this is very special because I was told you don't usually demo these speakers. The second I walked into the room, it reminded me of the Klipsch La Scala. The last time I listened to La Scala was at an audio buddy's home. I was telling myself, man, there's so many things wrong with this speaker objectively, but boy, can it move my heart. I felt the same magic when I heard the Klipsch Horn. Now, if you look at the size, the first thing you might think is that those speakers are going to pound you with bone-shattering bass and assault you with hyper-shouty top end with those big horns. It's the complete opposite. I call this a gentle giant. And it's not just because it is paired with extremely high and smooth-sounding esoteric amplifiers. The Scala does the same thing. It is smooth yet energetic. It projects energy forward, but it is not shouty. The bass has just the right amount of impact and slam. The bass is actually more on the nuance side, and it's not visceral like the Klipsch 44, for example. Perhaps it was the song they were playing, but it moved my heart the second I stepped in. It's the kind of speaker that many of you, not all, will fall deeply, deeply in love with. The other Eclipse room I dropped by had the Eclipse, the 9s, and the 7s on display. And it was the total opposite. I wonder if the Eclipse engineering team got the wrong memo. The CEO of the company. I want to design a speaker that can simulate a level 8 earthquake in my living room. The assistant. Sir, that would mean we need to build a big speaker. The CEO. So be it. Now, instead of sending the memo to the Klipsch Horn development team, they sent it to the Klipsch the nine department. You want glass shattering base on a budget? Get the Klipsch the nines. These are active speakers, and for those who are familiar with active speakers, you know the base on them just defies logic. It is like there's a hidden 12-inch subwoofer built into these speakers. I think active speakers are the future. High wife approval factor. Simple, clean looking, good enough sound for most and, above all, affordable. Everything is built in. You don't even need to buy an amplifier or source. Now one speaker I really want to check out was the Manapan LRS Plus. 
The reason is because every YouTuber and their cat has already listened to these speakers except me. Now I have the LRS, the original one, 0.7, the LRS, uh, the Manapan 1.7. So I was curious what more can the LRS Plus bring compared to the original one? The difference I was able to pick out was, well, you know, the newer LRS Plus sparkles a bit more. It was a bit more detailed. The sound stage was slightly more defined than the original LRS. Now I loved, loved the fact they drove it with some serious electronics. Each amp was like 500 watts with a tube for the input stage. I always say, man, up, man drive it with good elect electronics and your jaw will drop. Now, if I were Manapan, I would demo the 1.7i instead of the LRS Plus because the LRS Plus owners probably would never think about upgrading, right? They're that good. But when you get a chance to listen to the 1.7i with good amplification, LRS owners, I tell you, if you heard that, you would say Manapan 1.7i, where have you been all my life? Now at Exponent, there was a hidden secret Manapan room that was only for the press. Now as most of you know by now, Manapan has developed a dipole subwoofer with 16 drivers called the UBS that is fast enough to keep up with panel speakers. Wendell, the marketing guru at Manapan, strongly believes the future of panel speakers will be a marriage between panel and dipole woofers. At the show, Wendell was actually not selling the subwoofer, but selling this concept. I'm showing concepts here, not products. I'm not talking about Magnaband. I'm talking about where I see the future of loudspeaker technology going and the role that uh, these new ultra-fast, smallish woofers can, what they can do and when operated in a dipole fashion. It's the fact that we have these new materials, as new, new woofers, DSP, Class D amplifiers, you bring all that together and you got a whole new category of bass reproduction that duplicates the monstrous electrostatic and ribbon panels. For those who didn't notice, they actually were using the Galleon TS120 in the room. It worked really well with the Martin Logan and the UBS subwoofer. Uh, my friend has growls, which are supposed to be matched with the magnet pans really well, but uh, they sound more like a dynamic driver. This sounds like a panel. Spatially, the uh, speed that the bass that you hear and feel the bass is quite rapid, and it, it seemed pretty seamless. So I was pretty impressed. Moving on, the Vivid Audio Room had a speaker called the G. Uh, I hope that's how you pronounce it. Two that looks like an art piece. Someone told me the designer was Lawrence Dickey, who also designed the BMW Nautilus speaker. You know, the one that looks like a snail. The bass had a lot of weight, definitely in the heavyweight department, and can easily fill a room five times the size of this room. Well, at 95 grand, it better can. Now, given it was a busy room, I went to the other smaller room. They had the smaller Kaya 25 speaker in the other room. There was this track you played for five seconds to show how deep the bass can go. Four of us, our jaw dropped to the basement of this hotel. If we had 11 grand with us, we would have walked out with those speakers. The speakers sounded very open, clear, excellent holographic soundstage, and wide sweet spot. Now, my friend, two of them said, you know, this was the best of the show. Next, the dying audio room. They were displaying the Confidence 50 with the Octave MRE220 monoblocks. Now just these two pieces alone are worth over 50 grand. And for those who follow me, many years ago I said the Dying Audio C4 is my dream speaker and I always wish I can listen to it. Well, at Disney, or I meant Expona, dreams do come true. The Confidence 50 is supposed to be the C4 replacement. I love the design of these speakers, by adding some curves, they have modernized the C4. Now in this room, they play a track I was familiar with, Liberty by Annette Askvik. The center image was so, so, so solid. 
I could smell the breath of the singer. By the way, I had to drop by PS Audio Room, and the reason why I wanted to check it out was to make sure my memory of the FR30 is correct. You see, at the Montreal Audio Show recently, I said the FR20 was a bit laid back, and I remember the FR30 was not. At Expona, yeah, the FR30 was how I remembered it. Actually, it sounded even more lively and spacious. Plenty of headroom, felt effortless, and it impressed us. I've heard PS Audio set up a few times, but it sounded the best at the show. Why? Who knows, Ben? Perhaps all PS Audio gear sounds better when Paul is around. The next room was the rhythm room. Now I hope that's how you pronounce it. I was so looking forward to this room because of Lee Sung. Lee Sung, as you know, specializes in full range single driver drivers. And recently, I've taken an interest in those kind of drivers speakers because. I love the vocals of full range drivers, but they lack mid bass. Most companies would use the cabinet to deal with the mid bass and lower bass problems, but these rhythm speakers uses four seven inch bass drivers in an isobaric configuration instead. To drive those bass drivers, it uses a 400 watt Hypex amp. Now, while for the top full range driver part, they use an external amp. It is easy to drive. Apparently, two watt is enough. Probably the perfect speaker for the Deckware UFO 2M. The vocals were A plus, and it had enough weight in the upper and lower bass that it sounded full and strong. The integration was perfect, and the overall presentation was just fantastic. I have to admit, it does not sound like a typical full range driver speaker. Well, it does have more than you no know, one driver. But if you're someone who's looking for that, you know, you love that vocal of the single driver speaker, the full range speak driver speaker, but wishes it had a bit more balanced presentation, these speakers should be at the top of your audition list. I think they were less than 20 grand. Now, one of the rooms I was really curious about was the TAD room. And the reason is that I used to own this Pioneer S3 EX speaker that was TAD inspired. It was designed by Andrew Jones, who used to work for TAD. And I wonder how close my affordable Pioneer speakers were when compared to the real thing. Now, these TAD speakers were the CE1TX WN. I see where Andrew got his inspiration on naming the Pioneer. Okay, they were over 30 grand. The amp was named M1000-K slash S, and the DAC preamp was the DA1000TX. About 35 grand together when it started the music. I can tell these TAD speakers were nothing like my Pioneer. The S33, S3EX, the Pioneer speakers, were a bit rolled off, while these TAD speakers, they sparkled like all expensive speakers should. The way speakers sparkle, I'm very sensitive to that and, can, and I can tell the refinement differences between an affordable and an expensive speaker. Now, I might suck at everything else, but picking out refinement is something built into my DNA. The vocals were really textured. I mean, I had them play music I'm familiar with and right away I can tell, yeah, I don't get this level of texture at my home. Almost made me wish I have won the lottery ticket. Finally, the bass. You know, at an auto show, everyone is trying to one-up everyone else when it comes to bass. Some rooms even would bring in six extra subwoofers to make sure you feel the bass. In this room, I noticed the bass was more realistic and not over-exaggerated. Definitely detail from top to bottom. Uh, one thing I have is the experience of attending and setting up system in a few shows. And on top of that, I've tested over 100 pairs of speakers at my home. So what I listen for it's very different than most people at a show. So I was able to picture how this would sound in my home, and I can see it sound it will sound very balanced in a normal listening space. TD, if you're listening, come on, send me a pair for review. The Luxman room was special to me because it was the first big room I went to. You know, the first is always special. The electronics were about, I think, 80 grand. And the speakers were 45 grand. Those are mag magical speakers. Now, I was able to get a list of what was used in the room, so I'll just put it up here. Beyond the extremely refined sound, remember I said 
like there's expensive refine and there's budget refine. Now this is expensive refine. What caught my attention is how beautiful everything looked. The design is both simple and elegant. You know, it is a high quality piece just by looking at it. Now I have the Luxman SQN150 to M, which is not that expensive, maybe three, four grand. And um, it has that same expensive feel. I think what stood out for me in this room was nothing stood out. I mean this positively. For me, usually when that happens, it means it is a good system for long listening session. Now, don't get me wrong. When I say good for long listening session, you might think, oh, it's going to be rolled off. Not at all. It's detail across the board. Who knows? Perhaps it is the Japanese sound to go for that neutrality without sounding on the lean side. Well, if there's such a thing. Now, I can see my audio buddy, Mr. Vintage, loving the system because for him, neutrality is the most important. Next is the C Serna room. I thought it was pronounced Sienna, uh, but Google tells me otherwise. You know, I need to go back to school for all this, man. Even if the sound does not impress you, the looks alone should impress you. Base was surprisingly full, but not overwhelming, despite having six big woofers. They doubted them pretty seamless. For this room, just like the million dollar room with the Estelon Extreme speakers, the soundstage stood out. God level soundstage. The soundstage was deep and airy. Surprisingly, the singer did not feel oversized. Now, I was wondering about that because these are tall speakers. In this room, I had that aha moment because I think this was the third big room I checked out. And I think one of the big key features that separates the expensive and affordable room is the sound stage. Well, the expensive speakers have the advantage of the room too. It's almost like you have to make sure you don't forget the factor in the price of a new house when buying these kind of speakers. No, unless, of course, you live in a castle. The speaker from Orchestro is from Korea. Should catch everyone's attention. No, no, it does not transform. Well, how can you not be curious about them? A very innovative design. And I had this room as one of my must-visit rooms because a friend of mine told me last year he was blown away by it. The only time I listen to classical music is when I listen to it in on a system that is able to reproduce the scale and the gravitas of the orchestra. These speakers did it really well. Now you'll notice that they had two configurations, one vertical and one horizontal. I was only able to listen to the horizontal one and the stage is wide. The highs, the treble was not bright and the bass can go deep. With this system, I can stay there listening to classical music all day. You can hear each instrument distinctively. Now, Gershman launched a new speaker recently, the Studio XDB. I heard them at the Montreal Auto Show, and after the show, they dropped those speakers at my place. I pay attention to the amp used at this show. Yeah, VAC. If you don't know VAC gear, they easily cost more than my car. So with good amplification, these Gershman speakers can sing. The bass defies logic. The bass is tight and does not lose control regardless of volume. Now, for those who follow me, I've been using XSL E28 DAC for many years. Despite it being a dinosaur in the world of DACs, it is still good enough for me that I'm having a hard time letting it go. Now, in this room, I noticed there's absolutely no glare at all. I'm really sensitive to digital glare, and I suspect it is thanks to the DAC. I think it is the E82 streamer that they were using, around eight grand. Now, the sound of this room was on the warmer side. The mid-range was thick and full body. The overall presentation was bold and confident. Strong bass. The speaker sounded great at the Montreal Auto Show in a big room, and they also sounded great in the small room. Another room I wanted to check out was the Canton room. Now, Canton speakers, I had them before, and I was wondering how the higher-end models compare. Now, some people bought the Canton speakers after watching my video, and they told me, man, it's too bright. So when I made that video, I did not have high-end amps, so I was curious how they would sound if you pair them with very expensive amps. Turns out, the newer Canton does have similarities to the older speakers, older Cantons. The only thing is the speakers are not bright at all. Not sure if it's the amp or the newer Canton being less bright. I would say if you're a BMW, Focal, fan, yeah, you should go check them out. Apparently, they're one of the biggest speaker companies in Germany. Now, the next room had these speakers that had a unique design. Well, just look at them. 
you would expect the singer to be sitting on the floor, but not at all. These speakers took me a few minutes to appreciate. The fact that they look so simple made me think they are nothing special. However, as I started listening, I was like, "Darn, these are no joke." The mid-range warmth and the soundstage are way beyond what a normal setup can do. This can easily surpass most of the systems at my place, and this is in the hotel room. I know it is hard to get past the looks, but if you close your eyes and give it a chance, there is something special about them. I was tempted to ask if they can ship me a sample so I can review them. Then I found out the price: around a hundred grand for the system. Okay, never mind. No wonder it sounded so good, and I wish. I was a crazy rich Asian. Lastly, although I am not a headphone guy, I have to say, if you're into headphone, this is what headphone paradise looks like. Headphone heaven. I was calculating if I spent ten minutes with each headphone, it would take me probably three days to get out of there. Oh, I met someone there I knew. Here, let me at least dedicate a one minute of the show to headphone-related content. I'm Ving Vu. I'm the owner of Ginkgo Audio. I also market Dana Cable worldwide. We make、uh, cables for headphones, speakers, interconnects, and everything else. But we also just came out, we come out with the、um, Headspace, which is our headphone amp that can drive、uh, speakers as well. What we're showing here is the top of the line headphone setup, where we have this. Hi, five man Sesvara, connected to the Lazuli Nirvana, which is our top of the line cable, and going into the Headspace headphone amp, and supported by the Denafrips Venus DAC and a、uh, Sox Streamer、uh, server, and we're demonstrating here the difference between stock cable for the headphone and our upgraded cable. So here is the customer. Listening to the stock cable, and then we'll switch him to the upgraded cable. You want to switch to the upgrade cable and see whether you can hear the difference? So I can hear the difference. Yeah, this is the upgraded cable, same headphone. I can go on and on about the different rooms, but I think I'll stop here. There's so many good rooms. I have to say, this has been a great trip. The best part was meeting many of you. I try to spend time with as many of you as possible, and next time, I should build my schedule to go get a drink with you guys after the show. With that, let's end the video and see you next time. Alright, I'm gonna take a few more bags of chips to get my money's worth, man. Sandwiches, wraps, macaroni and cheese, chicken soup. That's it. You know what? I was hoping that there was a lot of good food, and I could eat so much that it was worth upgrading to business class. And sadly, I think the best thing is this、uh, chips. You know why? Because I can bring it on plane. It can take maybe ten bags, and、uh, get my money's worth.